My question is, if humans and, li and life were intelligently designed, then why do our bodies not show intelligent design so much as they reveal the evidence of evolutionary ancestry? I'm glad he's here. <laughs> well, this is going to keep us till after midnight, ladies and gentlemen. Bye. So I'm going to try and go to the heart of it. It poses an alternative, intelligent design or evolution. Now, evolution is a mechanism which consists basically of two things, natural selection and mutation. If you look around this room, you'll see we don't all look the same. Why is that? Well, there's been a good bit of selecting going on. And uh, there are also mutations from which we all suffer were different. So that mechanism does something. That's not controversial. Some of what Darwin observed was brilliantly observed. But now the confusions begin. Richard Dawkins, in his book, The Blind Watchmaker, said that evolution is the explanation for the existence and variation of all of life. That is false. Because the existence of life is not explained by biological evolution. Now, for the purposes of what I'm going to say, I'm not going to attempt to address the question whether biological evolution has limits. And now is a bit of shameless advertising. That's why I wrote this book. <laughs> to investigate that from my perspective as a mathematician. Let's assume that evolution does lots of things. But what it doesn't do is explain the existence of the mutating replicator on which it depends. And that mutating replicator is a micro-miniaturized factory of unbelievable sophistication. The language of life, the genetic code, is extremely ancient, according to what we're told. It's scarcely changed at all. And that raises immense questions as to how it could possibly have developed in the very short time available from the cooling of the earth till it was cool enough to support carbon-based life which goes back to a very short time after the earth was cool enough. Now, this interests me as a mathematician because the cell is an information processor. What we've got in the biological macromolecules is something that physics and chemistry do not know in the sense that you've got a signaling system, you've got a code, you've got a translator of the code. Now, in every other area where we see anything like that, the inference upward to intelligence is instant and immediate. It seems to me, without going further into it, that if you look at a cell as an information processing machine, it then can be simulated by a Turing machine, which is a kind of abstract computer. And all of you computer geeks will know, junk in, junk out. And that, I think, is borne out in the sophistication of what the cell is and what it does. Now, chemistry and physics do not have the capacity to produce these things. They can't produce them by evolution because evolution can't get going until you have a mutating replicator. So somehow it has to happen. And people have been working on it now since 1953 when Miller and Urey won the Nobel Prize because they thought they discovered the secret of life. Nobody knows. That is the confession of how life started. All I would suggest to you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is this. That if you look at it, whatever mechanisms are involved, the very nature of the entity that we have now come to understand is part of the carrier of life. The thing that it seems to me to instantly shout at you is that whatever else is involved, there is a designing intelligence behind it. You see, what we've got is a choice. 
It's between in the beginning were the particles and energy, and somehow they came together to produce elements, which somehow came together to produce macromolecules, which somehow came together to produce life, which somehow came together to produce consciousness, which somehow came together to produce morality, which sometimes how came together to produce the idea of God, because God doesn't exist. Or, you have in the beginning was the Word, and all things were made by Him. That is, mass energy are not primary. They're derivative. And that makes sense. Isn't it fascinating that the longest word we know has been given to us in some of our lifetimes, and it's the genetic word that determines the human genome. We recognize instantly that short words are the product of intelligence. What keeps us back from recognizing that the long words are not products of intelligence? Could it be a prejudice that the solution has got to be an unguided naturalistic process? Why is there such pressure in that direction? Because, ladies and gentlemen, if life did not start by an unguided natural process, that is the end of materialism as a philosophy. And that's a very high price for some people to pay. Thank you.